uh, the Stanford Tech Department, the Stanford Tech Department came out with uh, these um, uh, uh, language criteria, um, uh, index of forbidden words, right? Uh, and, and this is a recommendation by uh, uh, by the uh, uh, the tech department at Stanford and. Uh, <laughs> Index of forbidden words. Now, it's this is not, and there's no indication this is going to be <coughs> a compulsory. This is a, a list of words that is it, it is recommended at Stanford University by by the tech bros that you should not use that are offensive and shouldn't use it. And it very much reminds me of uh, you know the good old '90s. Uh, you remember political correctness, and uh, I mean there was a whole like the Idiot's Guides to Political Correctness, where they had the whole, all the list of words, and you couldn't say certain words, you couldn't say short, they're, you know, uh, vertically challenged, and all of this stuff. I'm not sure where all of that went. Political correctness kind of disappeared for a while and has come back as some type of, of, of wokeness. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, uh, <laughs> it's funny. It's ridiculous, and of course, because it deals with words, it deals with concepts. It is pretty serious because it is it is uh, it is a uh, more than anything. What these uh, things do is they create cognitive uh, clumsiness. They create cognitive inefficiency. They make thinking more difficult because what you can't say, you shouldn't think. They make thinking more difficult. They make language more difficult. They make it more cumbersome to engage in thoughts and conversations. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's absurd and ridiculous. So here are some of the words that you shouldn't use. You, you, sh you shouldn't call anything or anybody, but including anything or anybody crazy or insane. That, that is offensive. Uh, you can't use the word retarded. And I'm pretty sure that was true in the 90s. I, I, I remember that was, wasn't that cognitively challenged or something like that? He couldn't use the word retarded back then. But this, this goes a little further. So this, I'm quoting from the thing, uh, you can't use retarded because it is a slur against those who are neurodivergent. So now you have to call them neurodivergent or have cognitive disability. So I guess that's cognitive disability. All right, fair enough. But then it adds, you should not use to make a point about a person, place, or thing. So, I mean, you can say a fire extinguisher retards the fire. That's what a sprinkler system does. Um, you're supposed to, instead of, by the way, they offer you alternatives. So you can't blame the, the Stanford Tech Department of not thinking this through. They offer you uh, alternatives to, uh, by the way, this is, some of this is coming out of um, the Wall Street Journal. Some of this is coming out of an article by Jonah Goldberg. Some of it's coming out of an article on Reason. Uh, I, as I said, this went viral last week. Uh, but Jonah, even Jonah, it says, uh, Stanford says that instead of crazy, insane, retarded, you can say things like boring or uncool instead of retarded. Right? So he's, he, he writes, this is Jonah, right? So if there's a fire, a sprinkler system can uncool the blaze. Um, God, right? So everything is uh, 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 uncool or, uh, or boring. You're not stupid, you're boring. But soon boring is going to be insulting. Don't you think boring is going to be insulting? Um, one of the terms you're not supposed to use is American. You shouldn't call yourself an American because that's just wrong, right? There's a bunch of countries that are part of America, right? Uh, the American continent. There are actually 42 countries in the Americas. And American it kind of implies that we're the most important country in the Americas, that, that only we count. And that seems wrong, right? I mean, and I know this is a real problem because I'm sure the Canadians are offended because they like call themselves Americans, but they don't want to be confused by us, um, and yet, or, 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 you know, what about the fact that Canadians call themselves anti-Americans, and that doesn't bother them. I mean, there's a whole anti-American movement in South America. I mean, there's a lot of anti-Americans in South America. They call themselves anti-Americans, 
And they don't seem to have any problem with that. But we shouldn't call them ourselves Americans because there are other people who are Americans, even those other people who are Americans don't call themselves Americans and think of us as Americans and hate us because we're Amer Anyway, it goes on and on. Of course, the, um, of course the, 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 uh, Jonah, Jonah points out that the whole term Americans should be purged and is going to be purged. It's just a matter of time because, after all, America was derived from the name of Amerigo Vespucci, Amerigo, Amerigo, America. Uh, the Italian colonizer, he's a colonizer. Who, uh, he, he was the man who argued for the first time that what Columbus had discovered was a new continent. So he is considered, he, the continent was named after him. But he was a colonizer. He's one of those evil bad guys. So there's no way, we shouldn't even use America. And, and y you're sure that that is going to be, that is going to go away. So you really should call yourself a United Statist. So you're from the United States, you're not from America. Um, or United States citizen, but of course, citizen is a problematic word. Um, immigrant, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, immigrant is a problematic word. Um, they they list immigrants. Where's the where's the listing of immigrants as a problematic word? They, they've got a better word than immigrants. Um, let me just find this the immigrant one. Uh, yeah, I can't find immigrant, but immigrants, no, not acceptable. Here's some other ones uh, that are pretty funny. Um, you shouldn't say low man on the totem pole. I don't know that anybody uses that anymore, but totem, you know, can't use that. That's cultural appropriation. Um, long time no see, because that's discriminating, because some people don't see that they're discriminating against the blind. Um, don't use white paper. You, you, you know, you wrote a white paper on this issue. Can't use white paper. That's obviously racist. Webmaster. Webmaster. I mean, anything with master in it is unacceptable because a master, master and slave. I mean, nobody in America is a master. You can't use a master. Um, beating a dead horse is, is too cool to animals. It's, it's just, it, it's, it's too vivid. Or take a stab at it. You want to take a stab at that? But you can't use that because that's like, that's violence. You're, you're advocating kind of white, white noise, Jennifer. No, 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 no. That's racist. Can't use white in anything. Um, you can't use, um, uh, what was it? What was the term? So, so it used to be that you weren't allowed to use the term victim. In instead, use the term survivor. But now the survivor is not acceptable. And uh, the, the new uh, the IT department now refers to survivors or victims as person who has been impacted by. Now notice the cumbersome nature of the kind of language that that all implies. Um, you could go on and on and on about this. It's, it's, uh, it's ridiculous, uh, the, 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 and the absurdity of it all. And, it's interesting, um, Jonah quotes, I think, um, a, a, a really good quote out of 1984. Um, by the way, the website where all of these words are listed has a trigger warning. This website contains a language language that is offensive or harmful. Please en uh, engage with this website at your own pace. Just be careful, because, I mean, you could be offended. And you could, you know, the whole microaggression trigger warning thing it's kind of gone silent. That was the thing that kind of led to woke. And that was the thing like five, four, five years ago. And that has now gone under and, and maybe it's just been accepted. So it's not a newsworthy item anymore. Um, anyway, this is the quote from 1984, which I think is, is, is really apropos and it kind of exposes the... Um, it exposes the nihilism that is implicit in the destruction of banning of words, the cognitive destruction that is of uh, banning of words. Um, here's the quote from uh, 84. Quote, it's a beautiful thing, the destruction of words. Um, and, and uh, you know, that, that it's a beautiful thing, the destruction of words. And, and Jonah goes on to say the beauty of that project 
is to deprive the mind of words to describe reality as it is and to shrink the map of mental space. There is no safe harbor from the party line. I mean, that's, I mean, Jonah is summarizing uh, what's going on in 1984, but that's absolutely right. Again, the beauty of the project, that is the destruction of words, is to deprive the mind of words to describe reality as it is and to shrink the map of mental space so there's no safe harbor from the party line. And now that's absolutely right. So that's the kind of nihilism that is involved in this. Um, so, uh, yes, I mean, uh, you know, just a few other Stanford preferred replacement for stupid, uh, as well as retarded, uh, boring and uncool. We said that instead of crazy or insane, you're supposed to use the words like, like or surpri uh, wild or surprising. Uh, you want to jump off that bridge instead of saying that's crazy, you say that's surprising. Uh, or see that strange guy in the clown suit behind the wheel of that old van. It, it'll be wild if you accepted his invitation for, for a ride instead of it would be insane if you accepted his invitation for a ride. And you can go on and on. Okay, one more, and this is Jonah brings up, one more um, uh, comment on words, and this I think relates to the destruction of words, but this is one we've talked about before. Dictionary.com, dictionary.com has declared that its word of the year is, get what the word of the year is for dictionary.com. Anybody guessing? Word uh, of the year. Word of the year is woman. Woman, right? Pretty straightforward, uh, pretty straightforward uh, 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 word, yet a woke crowd, a woke world has put this word into play. What is a woman? A uh, woman happens to be one of the, as Jonah Goldberg uh, 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 writes, a woman is one of the oldest words in the English language. It's one of those fundamental words, one of the most basic words, because it describes something that is easy to identify and easy to recognize. Um, it's in intensely important. Uh, because the difference between men and women are crucial, particularly if we go back to uh, pretty basic, uh, basic life. Uh, it's, it's a reason why this is one of the first words we identify. The difference between men and women becomes crucial to human survival. It's a, it's a human survival word. Um, uh, and... Um, it, it, it's it tells us it, it tells you a lot of a lot about the world in which we live that um, it, this is the word of of the year right um, we can't define women anymore the dictionary.com is not sure what the definition of women anymore uh, it's it's horrible now this is uh, this is John Kelly this the dictionary.com's editorial director, he says, quote, the dictionary is not the last word on what defines a woman. No, it's actually biology. Uh, he writes, the word belongs to each and every woman, however they define themselves. In other words, words now become completely subjective, completely they mean whatever we feel like they should mean. Um, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. It's pretty absurd. We talked about this when we talked about when we talked about Matt Walsh's uh, "What Is a Woman." Um, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, people are now canceled, uh, being canceled uh, for claiming there is a difference between men and women, uh, or, or uh, claiming there's a difference between women and men who describe themselves as women, uh, women and uh, men who even go through surgical process to become women. Uh, or to become closer to women, uh, claiming that there's a difference there is now a cancelable offense. So in Norway, it, you can land up in jail, supposedly. Uh, Tanya Jegvjon, whatever, I can't pronounce her name, uh, who's a Norwegian actress, a lesbian, wrote on her Facebook page, quote, it's just as impossible for men to become a lesbian 
as it is for men to become pregnant. Men are men regardless of their sexual fetishes. Um, whether you agree with that or not, uh, she faces up to three years in prison under Norway's hate crime laws. Uh, so, state of language in the world in which we live. All right, um, pretty sad and pretty disturbing. Uh, and, and it really has nothing to do with um, your views on trans. It has nothing to do with the fact that uh, there is a small, uh, tiny fraction of percent of people who are not clearly men or not clearly women because the, the, the genitalia doesn't necessarily reflect their chromosomes. And uh, there's all kind of borderline cases, all kinds of them. I mean, it's, pr it, it's truly amazing once you start reading about this, the, the, the wide range of different types of borderline cases of, 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 of things that are, um, uh, you know, are not uh, clearly men or women uh, in, in... That doesn't eviscerate the actual concept. It doesn't change the fact that there is such a thing as a man and a woman. And it, 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 it just says that there's some people who don't fall neatly into either one of those categories. And th that seems to be a biological reality whether some of you like it or not, but it is a biological reality. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.